I was reminded on Friday by my karate students that uh, it was the end of the world. In the middle of karate class, one of my students pointed out, oh, oh, Master Moore, Master Moore, um, the world's supposed to end today. I think it was Friday, right? And, uh, and we all got a collective chuckle out of that, you know, we all laughed. But of course, you know, my mind reflect back to Christians who have attempted to predict the end of the world and other people who have tried to predict the end of the world using all sorts of insane methodologies and uh, calculations and, and, you know, and of course, we're sitting here today and we can laugh at that and say every one of them was wrong, but uh, we also know that one day it will come true. Uh, but we also know that whatever, you know, whenever somebody says, oh, did you hear that such and such predicted the end of the world on this date? I, I remind them that the Bible is very clear that, uh, you know, no man will know the day nor the hour. No one can predict that day. And so of all the days in history, I know one day when the end of the world will not be. And it's that day that they're predicting. But of course, then God's going to take that and flip that around and say, well, maybe I'll end it on this day just to surprise y'all because you're not going to know. And uh, maybe total coincidence. But... What is our fascination? What is our fixation as a people with the end of the world? Why are we so fixated on pinpointing that day? What is it that makes us think so? I mean, the Mayans didn't predict the end of the world at all, did they? It was really just they had planned out this elaborate calendar over millennia. And it just happened that the scribe who had been working and you know, putting together all the years and saying this is the day, these, these, and his, his hand got tired. He got tired of writing, he said, that's it. Threw down his quill, I'm done, finished. You know, we, we've, got, we've got our long range planning out for 5,000 years, I think we're good. I think we got our bases covered. Then of course, along come us, and we read this Mayan calendar, and we say, oh look, they planned out all these years and years and years, and stop. It must mean what? Of course, naturally we should come to that conclusion. It could be that the scribe's hand got tired, or that he died, right? He could have died, or maybe they just said, you know, enough is enough. Or maybe they ran out of scroll or stone, right? It couldn't be any of those reasons. Of course, it would have to be the end of the world. What is it that makes us so fixated on that? Why are we so determined to figure out that date? I think that, I think that part of it Maybe a, a morbid sense of curiosity, a morbid kind of curiosity, a, a fixation on the end of the world, almost like rubbernecking, right? You come across an accident, and of course, everybody has to slow down. Why? To look, right? What are they looking for? It's an accident. What do you see in accidents? Blood, bodies, broken glass, right? It's a morbid sense of curiosity. Maybe there's a, a little... A little piece of us in the deep in the deep in our hearts it's this macabre sort of longing to see things that are dead or things that are dying or things that come to an end the earth is dying and one day we'll die and maybe it's that kind of fixation on death that we're really trying to satisfy but i think that in that curiosity what we find is we are fixated with it on it because of fear, right? We're afraid, deep down, we're afraid for it to happen. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we were on in the Cold War. And how many movies have you seen where the Russians launched their bombs? Or where the Russians invaded the US? And this nuclear holocaust comes up. How many movies have you seen, let's broaden that out a little bit, that describe or picture or portray the apocalypse, the end of the world, the, the end of civilization as we know it, right? You could probably think of at least half a dozen if you were just sitting right here. You know, Terminator, Matrix, you know, Red Dawn, you know, all these different things. Nuclear, you know, nuclear holocaust, robots taking over the world, asteroids falling and hitting the earth, floods, you know, uh, deep freezes, blizzards, ice ages, right? Look at our cartoon, ice age, right? Even kids, right? I think there's a sense of fear. I think there's a fear for that last day to come about, a fear for the end of the world, a fear of the end of the world. And you know what? 
For unbelievers, they have a right to fear. They have good reason to fear. Because when God finally brings it out, the end of the world, when Christ returns, judgment day happens. And for people who haven't given themselves fully to Christ, that is something above all else which they should fear. Judgment day. Because when they stand before God and he asks them that one question, did you believe in my son and live like it? And they have to hang their head. There's only one response. And that will be eternal judgment. One question, one response. That response is at a eternal position. If that response is, no, I did not believe. No, I did not live my life according to your commands. No, I did not follow in the footsteps of Jesus, then the door will be closed. As the Bible describes it, they will be sent out into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pain, suffering, loneliness. But you know, that's unbelievers. All believers have a right to fear, don't they? People who don't believe, they shouldn't be afraid of that. But what about believers? What's their curiosity? Why are they fixated with that, pinpointing that death? How many Christians can you name and denominations were founded on the prediction of that last day? I think that there are Christians out there who are fixated on that last day for the same reason. They fear it. I have a friend. Now, you're going to have to walk down memory lane here with me for just a second. Um, my friend purchased a VCR <laughs> tape. Do you know what those are? They're kind of like square, about this big. They, they, they were before uh, DVDs, if any of you remember what DVDs are. Before Blu-ray, before streaming live on the internet. You know, VCR tapes, big bulky tapes, you put them in a machine and they play movies, right? She bought a collection of three tapes that was the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, she's a professing believer. She claims to believe. And she got her three tapes, very excited, pops the first one in, the first one titled, The Birth and Commissioning of Jesus. So we're talking about the nativity. We're talking about the wise men. We're talking about you know, all the Christmas stuff. And we're talking all the way up to the point where Jesus gets baptized to begin his ministry. She's very excited about that. He pops it in, watches it, really enjoys it. Oh, wow, the life of Jesus portrayed before me in my, in my magical box here. Gets the second tape. Wow, oh, the ministry of Jesus. So now we have the commissioning. She pops in the second tape. Just as excited. She sees the healing miracles. She sees the teachings. She sees... The casting out of demons, she sees the flipping over the tables of the temple, all these wonderful, amazing things, miracle of Jesus, moon walking across the water, all these cool things. She's like, yes, that's fabulous. And she picks up the third tape and it says, The last days. Oh, the last days. Oh, the last days. And she gets in her mind apocalyptic, apocalyptic images. Of fire, the earth burning, of people and screaming, and bombs blowing up, and salmon. And she's, she kind of shivers a little bit, and she puts it back on the bookshelf. She says, I'll save that one for later. That's not what I want to watch right now. And day after day, she kind of sees it on her bookshelf and kind of tries to ignore it. It's kind of like a, a nagging, sort of pooling, brawling, like, And she just tries to ignore this little voice in her mind. She keeps seeing it in the last days. Oh, do I really want to subject myself to seeing all those images? Ah, will I have nightmares? What will I see? What? And she, and she was afraid to watch this last video. Finally, after a couple of years, a couple of years it takes her to build up the nerve. She says, you know, I just gotta watch it. She goes over to the bookshelf and she pulls it off the shelf and 
She comes over, she's kind of shaking a little bit. She puts it in the VCR. She goes back, she picks up her remote control that has a long cable that goes to the bag. <laughs> With a little bit of nervousness, she presses the play. She kind of sits back and she watches. And she sees. Well, she sees. Jesus comes into the temple and is accused. He's out in the garden of Gethsemane. And Judas brings the people, and he's crucified, he's dead, and he's resurrected. The last days didn't refer to the end times, it referred to the last days of Jesus' time here on earth. It was the crucifixion, the passion, and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And then she felt so silly, she was like, what was I so afraid of all those years? Why did I wait so long to watch the last days? Oh, it's so silly. But think about the attitude. She was afraid to watch it, because she was afraid to see what the end times would bring. She was afraid of what she might learn, or what it might mean, or what it might teach her, or the images that she might see. <clears throat> she was afraid of the last time. Why do believers fear the second coming of Jesus Christ? Why are you afraid? Not everybody. But I think there are some. And I think there are maybe parts of some people here if not completely afraid, little pieces that are afraid. What, I mean, what is it that makes us afraid? Is it, is it our, I, I think that sometimes people who call themselves Christians are afraid because maybe they aren't really Christians, they're just what's called nominal Christians. The word nominal just means in name only. Somebody who says they're a Christian but really doesn't act like it. Somebody who says, yeah, I'm a Christian, but then they don't go to church, they don't read the Bible, they don't go to pray, except when they want something or need something or are afraid, right? Somebody who says they're a Christian, but it doesn't affect any other area of their life except when somebody asks them, what is your religion? That's the only time it affects their life. That's a nominal Christian. And what's the difference between a nominal Christian and a non-Christian? Basically the same thing, except that one admits it if they're not a Christian, and the other one pretends they are. I think that some nominal Christians have a right to be afraid. They don't understand the Bible, they don't understand Christ, they don't understand faith. Naturally, they should be afraid. But I think that there are some true Christians, some deep believing, faithful followers of Jesus who are afraid of thinking about and contemplating the last times of Jesus' second coming, just the same way that nominal Christians are. And I think that maybe some of us struggle with a little bit of doubt in our hearts. What if I'm wrong? What if all my years of belief have been wasted. What if God really isn't like the Bible describes him to be? Many people don't believe that that's how God is. What if they're right? I, don't know. I think that many Christians struggle with a little piece of doubt. And that little piece of doubt is like a crack in the door that allows a flood of fear and uncertainty into our hearts. So I think that that doubt, if you have doubt, some doubts in your heart, I think that can allow fear into your hearts. Ready? I think that some people are simply afraid of the suffering that the Bible describes with the end times. It talks about the second coming, it talks about apocalypse, and they're afraid of the great tribulation. And they think about tribulation and hurting and famine and all those things. But remember, the Bible says we need to fear suffering. In fact, God uses suffering to build us up. And it also describes that through suffering, after suffering, comes victory and reward. So suffering comes for a time. I think that's a natural fear, to be afraid of being hurt, of being persecuted, of being outcast, of being attacked. That's a natural fear, I think. And so people associate the great tribulation with the second coming of Christ. But remember, those are two distinct events. When Christ comes, we will go with him. It's not like Christ will be in the air and he'll say, okay, it's time to suffer, guys. You know, when Christ comes, that's it. Go on. That's the end. The beginning, I should say. And I think one last thing that probably allows Christians, the, uh, allows fear to enter into Christians' hearts regarding Christ's second coming is our ties to this world. <laughs> 